Okay, so today's topic is abstract class. So what is an abstract class? An abstract class is a mix of a normal class and an interface. So it has to have a part of implementation and a part of specific uh, uh, abstract um, functionality. So an abstract class is a class which has at least one abstract method. Um, in today's lesson, we will analyze uh, a routine that the programmer has, because many people know that programmers write code at work, but not many people understand how they do it. So today's topic will be finding out just that and <coughs> implementing specific routines of different programmers like how does C sharp programmer program how does Java programmer program and how does JavaScript programmer program so here goes uh, we have uh, an abstract class called programmer routine you can see that the programmer has a wake up time, a time it, uh, it sleeps and a time it is active for. And you feed the two parameters, which is hours to sleep and day start. Um, date start. Uh, when a programmer wakes up basically the first time it wakes up and how many hours it sleeps and then you make uh, construct a time span which is how many hours on top of the wake up time it takes for it to sleep and for it to be active in order to sleep again and we have our simulation <coughs> which consists of wake up, shower, eat, go to work, go to eat, go to, go to home, eat and sleep. And the implementations, it's just your ordinary implementations, but uh, pay attention to code method, which is abstract. And what this means is that we will have to implement this somewhere in the inheriting classes. Um, also, for the same reason, since we have to implement it, it cannot be private. If I write private, and I hover it, and it says private method cannot be polymorphic. <coughs> what does that mean? It means that abstract needs to be implemented by some other class and when you implement some other class you get polymorphism because you can uh, use programmer routine and a different routine as if it was a programmer routine so by having a method which is private you cannot do that so private functions private methods are not polymorphic so you have to either make it protected or public. Uh, in our case, we don't, like people don't know how programmers code, so we'll just leave it at it and simply implement this in individual programmers routines, but the overall uh, method code with implementation will still be hidden from publicity. <coughs> so sleep you basically uh, let's say you woke up at 8 then you go to sleep at um, mm, 10 I think 8 10 yeah <laughs> hello and yeah mute <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so we just print basically what uh, we're doing during each routine and that's about it. A helper method report for printing everything out. 
Um, I should probably move it all the way down. Uh, now the layout. The layout is basically everything that you use inside this method. You write under right under it and then the first time you used report you write it in the first place you can write it since I used it everywhere and I cannot use it everywhere I simply write it under all of those now let's check some of the implementations of our programmer <coughs> routine let's start with C sharp programmer so how do, does the C sharp programmer code uh, it's, he, he starts his day with some googling, then he does some abstractions, then he does more googling, then it implements the uh, abstractions, then it googles some more, and then it does some testing. Uh, Java programmer sips some coffee, does googling, sips more coffee, does Java. And JavaScript programmer, it resolves dependencies, then it creates more dependencies and then it uses those dependencies. Um, so if we go back to our, uh, if we go to the lesson, we see that we created uh, a wake up time. Um, so it's the time when, the next time where, when each of the programmers will wake up and we also wrote how many hours each of them will sleep. So Java routine will take six hours to sleep. Uh, C sharp will be 12 and JavaScript will be eight. So we put, we store each of our routines into routines array. And uh, we run a for each and simulate each of the routines. So if I hit F5, why is nothing happening? Okay, F5. Um, OP lesson series, OP guide. Um, oh, finally, it was weird. I don't know why. <laughs> Okay, anyways, if I hit Ctrl F5, uh, I should pause it at the end. So, console dot write the uh, read line and F5. So, <coughs> it prints what uh, each routine is. Let's make it a bit better by saying who does what. Uh, so, um, protected, we will do, um, actually no need for anything, uh, let's just print the type of routine we, we say it is. So, console dot, just report actually, report, uh, because it does console dot right line. So we report our routine, the type of routine that we are trying to do. So we say that we're starting that routine. Uh, start, and then we'll end. So start. <coughs> start. When we 
start we say who we are so we report and say um, uh, get type to string Started routine of started routine of get type to string. Okay. And the string. Right. Bracket. And when the end, we just say ending routine. Let's move the end to in the end. And the end, the end. Googling. Sleep. After sleep. Okay. Uh, and when we end, we don't do anything. Um, let's go to program. Let's hit F5. So we see that we are starting <coughs> routine of JavaScript programming routine, which doesn't sound too nice and should be probably concatenated or parsed in a better way, but it doesn't matter. So JavaScript programming routine starts with waking up just like everyone else at the same time. Uh, then we shower, we eat a banana, we shower, we resolve dependencies, create dependencies, we use dependencies, eat, resolve dependencies, create dependencies, use dependencies, shower, eat, sleep. And then routine ends. Note that code where we do work, where we start coding, it acts differently. Everything is the same except the middle part, which is doing the code, it's different. Resolving dependencies, creating dependencies, using dependencies. That's what JavaScript programmer does. C Sharp programmer does Googling, abstracting, Googling, implementing, Googling, testing. Now, Java programmer does uh, sipping coffee, googling, sipping more coffee, writing Java code. So this is how code uh, gets uh, written for each of the uh, three different implementations of program routine. <coughs> now, um, so what you just saw <coughs> is a template method it's a pattern commonly used when you want to include some of behavior in the middle of other behavior. Uh, like you have 10 steps and fifth step, for example, is different. More like you have 10 implementations, 10 different implementations, but all that is different is like fifth step in those 10 step in implementations. So to resolve this problem, uh, use abstract class and implement the abstract method. And we just did that. Uh, you, now you just came here. Is it clear where we are, what to see, what to do? Uh, do you understand? <coughs> do you understand yeah. where we're looking at, what we're doing, and do you have any questions? You don't have to do anything. Just listen, look, and see. You should be seeing a solution. Okay. So, <clears throat> is it clear what an abstract class is? Did you know what it was before? 
Nope. Okay. Um. Uh, I know what this house last, but. Uh, yep. Uh, this example is very descriptive, so it, he it helps me to clear in my mind when when to use it. Okay. It's because uh, uh, sometimes I can't think uh, if I have to write an abstract class. I just going with an uh, interface, but. Uh, this may be is wrong to use interface and to well the the only <coughs> problem that you that the, the, in general the only problem that Astra class solves and when you should use it over interface is when you have duplicate code if i didn't write an abstract class in this case and an interface instead i would need to implement everything uh, yes. which is uh, all the methods in the programmer routine and it's just so much redundant code that I ne would need to implement for no reason also also option number two would be moving this as just a class and having an interface uh, an interface called uh, I program a routine. So let's let's convert it. It's it's interesting. So let's do that. But it's a, like it's a solution. It's another way how to do it. But an abstract class wins still. So we don't need code here. Actually, so. I could split this class into two classes, uh, <coughs> more like into a class, not an abstract class, just a class and uh, an interface. So an interface would have code method and program routine would have uh, uh, and, and the, uh, so it program routine would have all those methods which would get inherited by the other um, uh, routines and code method would be in, in an interface, call it I program a routine interface. So each routine would then implement and inherit this and on top of that the interface, which we don't have right now, but that's a possibility. I programmer routine say there is that interface let's move it to another file and let's say uh, we don't need public so all it does void code whoops void code so now we have very similar very similar we have op i programmer routine and this well some problems everything that an interface has has to be public because it's meant for publicity publicity so <coughs> that's the first problem if we want to have code implemented yet not exposed to publicity uh, we cannot use an interface it it, it uh, breaks what we want. So that's the first problem. The second problem is if we go back to uh, programmer routine class, you see code, okay, sure, we have code now, but if it comes from an interface, we don't have it anymore. We could, we could uh, wrap this uh, as a virtual method Uh, we could wrap this uh, as a virtual method, uh, write this as a virtual method, and then, and then it could, uh, the behavior could be changed in the inheriting classes, but then it would violate the OP a bit, uh, and in the end, you could only do something at the end 
or at the start of it. You wouldn't be able to put it in the middle. So it's problematic again. So a rule of thumb when to use an abstract class. When you have code with part of implementation <coughs> and part of uh, abstraction, that is the main point. But at the same time, you want to immediately use the code that you abstracted away. Like in, ours, in our case, we have simulate and we abstracted away code but we use it immediately. We could have split the code method in uh, an interface called iProgrammer routine, and then, and then, when we implement, uh, we, when and then we could Im implement the interface <coughs> iProgrammer routine and inherit a class programmer routine. So no abstract and no override would be needed. We would simply implement it. But like I said, we would not be able to use it immediately in the simulate class uh, method. So that's uh, an issue. So it solves those two problems. Mm, and I, I don't really, I don't really see any other reason why would you use an abstract class or an interface. So. If you want to have a part of implementation, a part of abstraction, you use an abstract class. And then if you want to use that code immediately. So <coughs> for, for both of those reasons, when both of the reasons can be applied, you should use an abstract class. OK, let's uh, yeah. comment this. And now, OK. Also, a class uh, can inherit only one abstract class. Am I right? I mean, if class inherits an abstract class, <coughs> well, uh, yes. it can inherit something else. Yes, but that's just uh, the way things work because, in general, you cannot inherit more than one thing. You can implement more than one thing, but you cannot inherit more than one thing. Uh, uh, I said it wrong. You cannot inherit more than one class. By thing, I meant class. Yeah. yeah. So abstract <coughs> is a class, and you cannot inherit more than one. So you said that, I mean, you, the name, you, you said that uh, if it's public, it gets inherited. Yes. But if it's protected, it also gets inherited. Uh, if it's protected, you cannot use it outside the inheriting classes, but you can use it inside the inherited classes. For private, I inherit what is private. I don't inherit whatever is private. <coughs> yeah. You can only use it inside the class if it's protected. If it's public, you can use it outside the class. And if it's private, you can u only use in the class where it was written. All right. Um, what else? Um, so we don't need this interface because we deducted that it is not necessary because it doesn't solve our problems. But it could be if, <coughs> if we wouldn't have to use code method immediately. Um, so let's change it back to abstract class. Uh, so I'll hit F5, no, failed, failed. Uh, I have some errors, um, error list. <coughs> well, no 
format. Um, so I'll show you the output of the program. Lesson. I'll post it in lesson history. This is the output when we run the program. We see something like this. So it just says the routine. But the key point to note is that middle part of each routine is different based on how each programmer spends his day at work. How each routine goes. And if you go to um, <coughs> lesson four, method run, where I am, you can see that we start each routine in programmer routine. So, and then a day at work iterated through each routine and ran a simulation for that routine. So we used polymorphism, which is Java programmer, c -sharp programmer, and JavaScript programmer routines all acted as if it was just a programmer routine, which they are, except they're implementations of that abstraction. And we ran simulate method, which is of programmer routine with implementation of each uh, of each saying how code is done. Um, do you have any questions? Me, no. Uh, no. So, so, so when do we use abstract class U? Mm, most of the time you don't indeed. <coughs> Why don't we use an abstract class most of the time? <laughs> Why don't we mostly want to implement stuff? It's not waste of code. Please be more precise. Well, I didn't say it yet in this lesson. Well, when you program, when you do programming, you want to be dependent on abstractions, on complete abstractions of everything. So, when you write code, you design stuff in that way that uh, you have an interface and uh, more like whenever there is a dependency, whenever there is a relation like class A depending from class B, you, you should remove that dependency by saying that class A depends on interface, which is implemented by class B. In that case, you no longer need to know details which happen and have to happen when a class gets, uh, when, when that method gets executed. In that case, you know what, what it does and you don't care how it does it. So that's why abstract class is not as commonly used as it could be because we aim to have an abstraction a complete abstraction in most cases. So interfaces are used and abused, and it's a good thing. Uh, for example, if if I had <coughs> if I had uh, a calculator class, a simple calculator class, and then if I had a scientific calculator class, uh, and let's say there are complex methods such as calculating uh, a logarithm of some number, 
and I implement that myself, let's say, with binary numbers and stuff like that, let's say. So that's a complex operation, but let's say another class uses that algorithm calculation based on my calculator class. I don't know if it works, but I can mock it out. I can mock it out and return a hard-coded value every time, and I can presume that that value is correct. It might fail if I don't mock it out, so for that reason, if I say that the scientific calculator implements uh, I calculator interface with logarithm calculation method, I can change uh, the place where my class used uh, the calculator class, the scientific calculator class, with the I calculator dependency. So then I can uh, create an instance of a mocked calculator, which simply returns a hard-coded value so that I know for sure it's what I expect and what I want. That's why you use interfaces over abstract classes. Uh, the most common case of using abstract class though is the template method, which is the thing that you just saw, where you have a step, a single step or a few steps which are different and the rest of implementation is common across the, the classes, multiple different implementations of those classes. So that is <coughs> the, the, uh, the use case. Uh, another use case would be in some design patterns where you have default behaviors or different behaviors, steps, but again, it's, it, it all comes down to steps. All it all comes down to something that is reducing redundancy by writing an abstract class rather than an interface. <coughs> um, so I think that's that's it for this lesson. Do you have any real examples from projects uh, that you needed to use uh, after class? Um, um, <coughs> uh, yes. <coughs> but it's uh, not the best example since I was very early on in my uh, programming career. When I had to make my game, it was a mobile game. I, uh, it was a template method again. So basically uh, a sequence of actions which happen after certain event gets triggered. So for example, uh, I, for example, I have a method which defines the actions, the steps I need to do in order to complete, let's say, a certain obstacle, a, cer a certain challenge. And those steps were uh, abstract methods mm -hmm. and different obstacles, different challenges had different implementations of those steps that I had to do. Uh, for example, I had to start differently, I had to end differently, and I had to do something in between differently. So basically three abstract steps and one method like action which has those three steps. Uh, other than that, um, abstract factory a design pattern which is uh, quite commonly used when you make a game <coughs> to create let's say enemies so you you have factories different factories of different enemies 
and each factory produces different enemies, different kinds of enemies, I should say. So for example, uh, more like object factories. So you have abstract object factories, and then let's say you have specific factories like, uh, like uh, obstacle factory, uh, particle factory, like enemies factory and so on and so forth and those factories each have a part of implementation like a cache of created objects so that you can reuse it like a method build which builds an object so when you build an object you need to check <coughs> if it's in a cache and then return it if it's in a cache if it's not in a cache you need to create <coughs> it and put it in a cache so each of those factory share that method to create a, an object or use an object and clone it instead if it's already in the cache uh, so that's what each factory does and uh, when so yeah that's what each factory does and when you create a specific factory you um, you define how, what, what types of objects there are, what things it can do, um, give a bit more details. And when you uh, try to create a specific object, you again, load those details. Let's say an object has a method called build and each object gets built differently. Like let's say an enemy needs to have uh, health, uh, some, attributes, skills, and so on. Uh, an obstacle, all it has to do is material and physical shape mm, collide. <coughs> you add all those in it, and that's it. So for for game design, it's, it's really nice. Yes. Um, but like I said, in design patterns, it's very commonly used. Hello. Hello. Hi. What's up, guys? Uh, I'm a little late. Yes, but it's fine. Uh, so, uh, do you have Visual Studio Live Share? Uh, <coughs> Studio, yes, but not Live Share. Okay, for if you plan to come next time, please download it because that's where we write code and we discuss code. And you can even write your own code real time and it's like Google Docs for programming. I I got it, I got it, okay. Yeah. Okay, so anyways, uh, do you know what abstract class is? Actually, uh, I'm writing some codes, but uh, and I know a little about abstract and interfaces, but not so much. That's good. Uh, so, um, uh, what is the difference between abstract class and a class? Ah, uh, good question. <laughs> Actually, uh, I think I can't answer this question. So if, uh, if a class and interface had a baby, how would you call it? <coughs> Sorry, if, did you? If a class and an interface had a baby, like if you mixed the two, what would you get? I don't know. You, you would get an abstract class because an interface is an abstraction and class is an implementation. An abstract class is in between because it has a part of implementation and a part of abstraction. So as long as there is at least one abstract method in a class, it's called an abstract class. Okay. Uh, by the way, 
Uh, I'm playing to download live share. Uh, sorry, what? Uh, I am trying to download uh, Visual Studio Live Share. Ah, okay. Uh, you can continue. I am listening. Okay. So, <clears throat> well, it's it's uh, for you dedicated now because the lesson is quite quite finished. So I'll just I'm just repeating, wrapping it ah, up for okay. you. Okay. 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 So, <clears throat> so. Uh, So you cannot create an instance of an abstract class because it needs an implementation. Like if I say a car and yep. a car has methods, uh, like each car can be manual or automatic. And based on that, you have switch gear method so let's say there is gears better example there's gears class and you have automatic gears and manual gears and the gears class has like speed optimal speed for each gear it has how many gears do you, does this uh, does it support and then and then it has abstract method to switch to switch gear so uh, manual does it manually and automatic does it automatically so you could implement the specific way how uh, <coughs> switching gears gets handled in the gears class specific gears class so abstract gears class gets implemented by automatic gears and manual gears so it's an example of abstract you cannot create an instance of gears because it's abstract but you can create instance of manual gears or automatic gears uh, so even though abstract class and i didn't say it to others too even though abstract class has uh, like it, even though it cannot be created by itself, you can still uh, have a constructor for it, except that you won't be able to use it uh, outside that class, uh, only in the inheriting classes. So for that reason, uh, a constructor of abstract class can be either uh, public or protected <coughs> it cannot protected. be sorry it can only be private or protected it cannot be yeah. public because public means uh, it can be accessed from the outside and that's not the case same for <coughs> not same for uh, abstract method for abstract method it needs to be either protected or public because the intention is for it to be inherited if you write private it means it cannot be inherited so yeah. it will it will just disappear and it's gonna be useless uh, <coughs> so to wrap it up the the reason why you should be using abstract class over interfaces because you would like to have some implementation and use that implementation immediately in your class or like this or both both of those things like one of the things or both of those things if it's both of those things then hands down do it if it's one of the things then I would consider what to do but I would still do it probably. Why people use uh, interface with empty methods to be implemented rather than abstract class without any implementation? Because abstract class in the end is a class. It's a detail and we want to be dependent on abstractions rather than 
on details. That's why. Uh, no, I am doing uh, small uh, applications, desktop applications, and actually, why I I don't understand <coughs> interface and abstract classes because I don't use because I don't need. Uh, I think interface and abstract classes uh, need big projects. Am I right? No. Uh, okay. the, the thing, the thing about uh, interfaces and abstract classes, even classes in general, even methods like many methods, you can have everything written in one method, and it will work. You you can have everything written into different things. You you don't need tests and so on and so forth. But that's not proper coding, and that's not clean code. And if you want to write like enterprise level quality code, then classes and uh, abstract cl interfaces in general, abstract class not so much, but interface in general is the way to go. Because when you have uh, an interface, you can do testing, you can do mocking, you can fake stuff, change stuff. Uh, let's say something doesn't work, you can swap it immediately with mocked modules and so on and so forth. Um, basically, testing doesn't matter how big the project is, it should exist. If it's like really, really small, then sure, maybe. But uh, the time will come when you write the code and you think about the future. And when you write code, you want your code to be reused. In the future and in order for your code to be reused you should probably write interfaces uh, because it allows others to extend your um, implementation change your implementation or do whatever they want with it uh, so it's just so much value that interface brings and also design patterns if, if let's say uh, you look up some design patterns and there's some that suits your solution that solves a problem that you have every design pattern is based either on an interface or an abstract class so it just helps a ton and you don't use interface on every class but it's still hard for me to accept that too, but <laughs> as long as a class has some methods, it should have an interface. But essentially, write an interface if it solves your problem. If you do testing and if you need mocking, and if there is something to be mocked, such as a method with an input output, write an interface. If there is a data transfer object, abstract class or interface that's that's just not the way to go so if it solves <coughs> the problem write an interface could you give an example have you ever had a doubt if you should write an interface or not or you just never thought of it actually uh, <clears throat> i am beginner so i didn't hurt i didn't hear okay uh, could you give example what your app does? For example. Sorry. Sorry? Uh, example of what your application, the desktop application. Uh, my, my application is about uh, a jewelry stock application. Uh, you can see in GitHub. Uh, I can send you in message. Uh, it's a stock. Uh, for example. Uh, I have some uh, goals. Uh, what I have in stock and what when uh, I sold, uh, and it's uh, gold kinds. For example, uh, twenty-two million. Uh, I don't know. It's English. <laughs> actually 
Uh, I am sending you GitHub project. Okay. Maybe. Uh, I will send later, but uh, I have layers. Uh, I did it to uh, <clears throat> according to architecture layers, but uh, no interfaces or abstract class because I didn't need. Uh, actually, I am doing uh, lonely uh, in this project. And uh, why I need to use interfaces? Because it's only a classes uh, for implementation. And uh, instead of using interface class, uh, I just use normal class. And uh, I am uh, calling methods from normal classes. Uh, no need, no need in this time for interfaces. Yes, so reason why you would want an interface is when you have two implementations for the same thing. Let's say you have a strategy, like a, a, an aggressive AI pushes for the goal very aggressively, like it, it tries to find every way to provoke the opponent to, to seize the opportunity and take it, and let's say a passive AI, um, um, it, it just plays more defensively. It, it doesn't attack, rather it, it defends, but when it defends, it does it very good. So imagine if you had an IAI interface and passive AI and aggressive AI would be implementations of that interface. So in that case, when you create, let's say, a bot, an enemy, you can pass AI through an interface and call it like that. So it solves the problem because you no longer need multiple classes. I mean, you still need multiple classes, but you no longer need an if case or something like that to, to determine what it should be based on the behavior it is. You have an, a polymorphism, an abstraction, and you depend on abstraction rather than on implementation. Um, let's see. I'll quickly look through it. And okay. I will comment what I think. Uh, It's uh, Turkish, yes, so... Yes, I see. <laughs> uh, Write code in English, that's rule number one. <laughs> yeah, you are right. Because language uh, syntax is in English and you, you don't... There, there isn't... Mm, like, right now I read it and I don't really understand what, why and what is going on. Yep, you are right. So it's... It's dirty code, that's the definition. <laughs> there are much more to clean code than, than just language. And I recommend reading Clean Code by Robert C. Martin, AKA Uncle Bob. It's, it's just an amazing book. And it will help you understand why you need an interface uh, and how it helps. Which book? Uh, Clean Code by Robert C. Martin. Robert C. Martin. Uh, yeah, I saw now Clean Code. I don't want with 